Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, Amateur Radio Call Sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. In this one, we're going to answer a question from Art, W1SWL. Uh, he says, Hi Dave, I have a question regarding my 80 to 10 meter large horizontal loop antenna. Now, I had one of those antennas once, so I'm familiar with what he's talking about. In doing my research on this antenna prior to building it, most authors indicate the impedance is about 200 ohms. The impedance for a large horizontal loop will vary widely. Uh, you need a wide, um, wide range tuner in order to get this antenna to uh, work on whatever frequency you want. Before we jump in and answer Art's question, I want to give a special thanks to Scott Pallath, who has a uh, patron of mine, has been a patron of mine for a while, and I really appreciate it, Scott. It helps support this channel, it allows me to pay my assistance, etc., etc. Also, um, blah, 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 blah. You too can become a patron of my channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og. Now let's go back and take a look at Art's very interesting question. The wide range tuner that I use is an MFJ993B, which has the virtue of being an automatic tuner. Also, it remembers the tuner settings for uh, whatever frequency you're using, so you can go to that frequency very quickly. But you need also, I think, I would recommend feeding it with letter line or window line. Uh, when you do so, you will not have anywhere near the dB loss in the line that you will if running even LMR 400 up to it. So yes, feed it with ladder line. If, like me, you do not want to bring that uh, into the shack, uh, terminate it in a ballon, usually a 4 to 1 ballon, like from ballon designs, or even a 9 to 1 ballon from ballon designs uh, will work very well, okay, over a wide range of frequencies. And then bring the coax into the house. I suggest that the coax be something sturdy like LMR 400, that it be terminated at a lightning arrestor right on your ground rod because that uh, grounds the shield on the cable which you want grounded because there's going to be some stray current on that shield. And then bring that into your shack to the tuner. Okay. Now understand that the longer that uh, cable is, the more losses you will have. Because uh, you'll be running somewhere you're up in the range of, uh, you know, 8 to 1 SWR and stuff like that. Now the thing still can transmit and can do so very nicely. It just needs that uh, tuner that's capable of very high reactances uh, like the uh, MFJ wide range tuner. They're also made by LDG. You can get them from a variety of sources. Contact DX Engineering or Ham Radio Outlet or you can contact MFJ directly uh, and get the one that you want. Now, I, I do note that there are supply chain issues that still plague us, uh, and there are other alternative uh, antenna tuners that you can use. LDG also has automatic antenna tuners that are very wide range. You don't need one of the big fancy ones with the big uh, handle on the coil or anything like that, unless you are running very high power. If you're going to run a kilowatt into that thing, you want a sturdy tuner. And um, the problem with the, uh, the MFJ tuner is rated at 300 watts, okay? Um, if you're going to run something at, uh, say, 1500 watts, you really want a tuner that's rated about 3000 watts, because otherwise the voltages in the tuner can cause the capacitors to arc over. And if they start to smoke, something's going wrong, okay? So you need a hefty tuner if you're running an amplifier with that particular antenna. Now, regarding the performance of that antenna, even if it is up at 
50 feet like you say it is. Uh, that's only a quarter wavelength, less than a quarter wavelength uh, on 80 meters. So most of the radiation will go up and out like that. So that's very good for NVIS for in close contacts, perhaps two or three states away. Sometimes you will get some unusual propagation that will bring a signal to you from some DX station. On 40 meters, that antenna is almost a half wavelength, so you will get a little more wide area propagation. Now, on 20, 15, 10, stuff like that, uh, the antenna will work, but it has very strange loads. So it might work outstanding going into Belgium, but you can't hit the Netherlands. Okay, I mean, it's just really, really weird spider-shaped uh, patterns coming out of this antenna. Now, I said I used to have an antenna like that. I took an old uh, HF9V, which is a vertical that requires radials. I uh, completely serviced it by taking it all the way apart down to the last bolt, cleaning it, and putting it all back together with that little paste they call it's not butter that is um, a sort of that by the way is the name where butternut comes from is that paste and it's a, a greased with millions of copper flakes in it so it's conductive grease and you use that and it makes very very good contacts and keeps the antenna in good shape now i found that that antenna worked better than the loop I had about 15 radials on it, and I completely redid the radial system, putting in about 15 radials. And it was so much better than that loop that I actually took the loop down, cut it into a series of 25-foot radials, and added those to the butternut antenna, greatly improving its performance. I since took a 500-foot roll of uh, black insulated number 14 uh, wire from um, Home Depot and cut that into 25 foot radials and put those. So that antenna right now has a gazillion radials and it performs extremely well. It's no longer the butternut. It's now uh, the, uh, the step IR, big IR uh, in there and it's just a fabulous antenna. So lots of things you can do with that loop. And the nice thing about that loop is if you've got it up in the trees, it can be nearly invisible to the neighbors. I would recommend feeding it with ladder line. And like you, I would not want to bring the ladder line into the shack. I used to do that once, but I had a lot of RFI problems. So I moved the ballon further up the line and it works really well. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel financially, you certainly may do so. Please go to decastlercom support. Also, while you're at it, click subscribe. Most of the people who watch these videos aren't subscribers. Why don't you become one? It's just your vote of confidence in my channel. It doesn't cost you anything or give you a problem. If you want to be notified of upcoming videos, you can click on the bell. That will do that too. So until we next meet, 73.